As scientists, the staff at NIST will be more than well aware of the scientific investigation principle of Occam's razor, a principle of economy. It encourages the inquirer to avoid overcomplicating an investigation, to look for the most logical answer to a problem based upon accepted and tested laws of nature and science. In other words, a simple hypothesis is generally better than a complex one. Hypotheses should not be multiplied without necessity. And in other words, the simplest explanation is always to be preferred, unless further evidence forces its abandonment. An honest investigation should always start by looking at the observed event or data, then follow the evidence wherever it leads. So why did NIST, ignoring the scientifically accepted principle of Occam's razor and the obvious observation of the building's freefall, begin their investigation with such a complex and unprecedented hypothesis involving fire? Their proposal read, The challenge was to determine if a fire-induced floor system failure could occur in WTC7 under an ordinary building contents fire. The column at the very right is column 79. And that's the column that first buckles, causing the floors to come down, followed by a quick succession of failures of adjoining columns. These pictures were taken in 1985, during the early stages of Building 7's construction. As can be seen, the steel framework was designed not to fail. In addition to its extremely robust and substantial composition, this heavy steel framework, as well as being laterally supported by poured reinforced concrete floors, with thousands of sheer studs holding beams and flooring assemblies solidly in place, was also spray foam and gypsum board fire protected. Not only was this building's engineering extremely robust, but the amount and thickness of steel involved also had enormous capacity for thermal conduction and dissipation of heat, meaning that it would require very substantial heating in any single location for a large local increase in thermal stress. Normal travelling fires fueled by no more than normal office furniture, as described in the observed fire section of this film, will not have much, if any effect, upon fire protected steel framing of this standard. Here is our structural model showing the building collapsing which matches quite, quite well with the video of the event. Notice to the left how the entire bolted and welded steel framework of the interior just cascades as if it's unconnected like Jenga. It is possible that you could have a, a local failure as a, as a result of a, fa a connection failing, but the likelihood of the, that failure dragging the entire building in such a fashion that all the columns would fail at the same time is an impossibility. Impossibility? Yes. The complex and expensive NIST computerized theory and animated model of collapse clearly conflicts with the observed reality. It ended very prematurely in the collapse sequence. It does not explain or reflect the building's freefall. And, as Richard Feynman explains, it does not matter what your name is, how many titles you possess, or how much money you spend. If your theory disagrees with the observed event, it's wrong. Okay, now that's the present situation. Now I'm going to discuss how we would look for a new law. In general, we look for a new law by the following process. First, we guess it. <laughs> yeah, then we com well, don't laugh. That's the really true. Then we compute the consequences of the guess to see what, if this is right, if this law that we guessed is right, we see what it would imply. And then we compare those computation results to nature or we say compared to experiment or experience, compare it directly with observation to see if it, if it works. <coughs> if it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. In that simple statement is the key to science. It doesn't make any difference how beautiful your guess is, it doesn't make any difference how smart you are who made the guess, or what his name is, if it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. That's all there is to it. Even to this day, NIST refuses to release its data for scientific peer review. The guardedness may be related to the fact that an organisation backed by thousands of architects and engineers has clearly identified that rather than following the evidence and data in the manner of true science, 
In addition to ignoring the importance of freefall, NIST has distorted and omitted many technical factors which completely undermine their theory. Distortions which include temperature simulations and fire durations, the degree of thermal expansion of the beams blamed for the collapse initiation, correct dimensions of a critical girder seat width, omissions such as the presence of girder web stiffeners and lateral support beams, girder side plates which would preclude the key lateral displacement at the alleged failing column 79, and the existence of thousands of shear studs fixing beams to floor assemblies. This cited the existence of shear studs in other buildings involved in more aggressive fires as the reason for their resilience. In 2008, their report stated that had the shear studs been included in the construction, the structural failure would not have occurred. NIST went on to say in that report in 2008 was that the reason that column was able to be pushed off of its seating was because they said the column was unrestrained. And yet it was discovered last year in 2012, after a Freedom of Information Act request was granted, that that NIST claim was not true. The columns were restrained. In fact, there were 3,896 shear studs holding those columns in place. My name is Leroy Holsey. I'm a forensic engineer and a professor at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Steel is a very fire resistant material. When a structure fails, my job is to figure out why. Over the next year, with a team of PhD students, I will be rebuilding World Trade Center Building 7. How does floor 13 respond with respect to 12? Using the same drawings that were used to build it originally, we will reconstruct it virtually. Our goal is to figure out why it collapsed late in the afternoon on September 11, 2001, even though it was not hit by an airplane. The investigation conducted by the National Institute of Standards and Technology concluded, What we found was that uncontrolled building fires caused an extraordinary event. The collapse of World Trade Center 7 was primarily due to fires. Our investigation will evaluate the probability that this was the cause of the collapse. We are making this study open and transparent. Whether you are a physicist, engineer, architect, fire expert, or a specialist in another field, or just an ordinary citizen, we want your participation. We are making all of our data available online. Every aspect of our process regarding the modeling will be shared and we will be giving regular updates from the lab as we continue our work. Join us in getting to the bottom of why World Trade Center 7 collapsed on September 11th, 2001. Well, now today we're gonna to release to you the results of a $300,000 study conducted by scientists at the University of Alaska. Those PhDs have used computer technology to prove that the way the National Institute of Standards and Technology says that Building 7 came down was not only wrong, it's impossible. Furthermore, they can now say with absolute certainty that there is only one way that building could have come down, and that is for the entire core of support beams to fail at the same time. It was six years ago that I traveled to New York City just before 9-11 to report on claims that were being made by the group Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. That claim was on 9-11, the third building that came down that day, could only have been taken out through a total failure of support columns. That's what they were saying. Now we would know this as something called a controlled demolition. Take a look. And in a controlled demolition, when you have a core and an exterior, and you take the core out, it pulls in the exterior and it comes down. What happens if, if you leave half of them? So if, if, if it's not a controlled demolition, if you right. just have a, a failure of half the columns. You'd have a partial collapse. Again, that was six years ago, and yet now on the 18th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, a new study has just been published, one that took hundreds of thousands of dollars and several years to complete. The groundbreaking Building 7 study, a structural re-evaluation of the collapse of World Trade Center 7, was conducted by Dr. Leroy Holsey, a PhD, as well as two other researchers at the University of Alaska. It is a finite element analysis that uses computer modeling based on the original blueprints for World Trade Center 7 to determine what could and what could not have caused the collapse. The study examines NIST conclusions and finds them to be untenable. Did billing 
seven collapse from fires? And the answer is no. UAF finding shows that the girder bearing at column 79 moved less than two inches. It would not have been a problem. It did not have a problem in lateral buckling, not using their fires. The executive summary of the UAF study finds that, quote, fires could not have caused weakening or displacement of structural members capable of initiating any of the hypothetical local failures alleged to have triggered the total collapse of the building. Nor could any local failures, even if they had occurred, have triggered a sequence of failures that would have resulted in the observed total collapse. Well, this leads Dr. Holsey and his colleagues to this, quote, It is our conclusion, based upon these findings, that the collapse of World Trade Center 7 was a global failure involving the near simultaneous failure of all columns in the building and not a progressive collapse involving the sequential failure of columns throughout the building. Well, that failure of columns would mean that nearly all of the columns in the base of the building would have to have been taken out simultaneously. Remember, this is a building that on 9-11 was never, never hit by a plane. It simply collapsed. What's more, Dr. Holsey's conclusion does match a theory that has long been promoted by so-called 9-11 truthers, that explosives were actually used to bring down Building 7. Here's the UAF collapse simulation. Velocity is a red. And uh, actual building collapse velocity by David Chandler took the video and, and, mo and monitored aspects of it in time and plotted it. He was a physicist and in two and a half, over a two and a half second period. And you can see it's, a, it's free fall. That's what that building did. And our red simulation points are very much on top of that, just to kind of give you an idea. Alaska University's forensic examination has provided additional recognition of the validity of the original measurement of Building 7's freefall by David Chandler. We now have recognition of the freefall of Building 7 from the original and independent measurement of David Chandler, a reluctant and veiled recognition by NIST, and from the engineering department of Alaska Fairbanks University. Of the hundreds of thousands of words devoted to their voluminous reports on 9-11, NIST only published a couple of lines of text regarding 7's freefall, recorded as discreetly as possible. NIST's recognition of the freefall of 7 can be found in the third paragraph from the bottom of page 45 of their final report. Here NIST acknowledges that the north face descended at gravitational acceleration and in order for this to occur, the buckled columns must have provided negligible support, clearly stating that this freefall drop continued for approximately eight stories or 32 meters, 105 feet, requiring zero resistance from all 81 columns at the same time throughout eight stories. The freefall is also illustrated by the red line through the graph in figure 3-15. The red line through the data has a slope of 32.196 feet per second squared, which is 9.81 meters per second squared in metric units, which is, of course, gravitational acceleration. And NIST continues to be deceptive by claiming these findings are consistent with their simulation, which is clearly untrue. The Alaska University report confirms in detail that the NIST computer model needed to make many unjustified and some might say fraudulent alterations of the actual structure in order to get their model to collapse. And, as Ben Swan just explained, the only way Alaska University could get a collapse that resembles the actual collapse was to remove all vertical support over eight floors, something which fire obviously cannot do. To muddy the waters and confuse the lay reader, NIST added their stage one reading, which after examination and research is found to be a non-downward movement, a lateral movement of a kink forming in the middle of the north face roof line, only visible and measurable via NIST's deliberate selection of a low camera angle, which introduced a significant parallax measurement error, fraudulently buying their analysis extra time. A more detailed description of this can be viewed by searching for David Chandler 9-11 Anniversary Physics Talk, which will be shared on the Firefighters for 9-11 Truth website.
Thank you.